called a commedia and farce, but it's not a strict commedia, so there's no masks or anything like that. But it draws on all the elements of, of you know, where comedy sprang from, which was commedia dell'arte in the 15th century Italy. So we have mistaken identity, we have kind of lovesick teenagers that will kind of do anything to win, win their hearts. You know, we've got um, wily servants that kind of outwit dim-witted masters. Uh, those those archetypes are all very much in place. And then we also draw on things like traditional histories of vaudeville and music hall and even right through to carry-on films and that sort of stuff. So the, the comedy feels quite modern um, nonetheless. So yeah, it draws on a whole variety of traditions. Anything we can do to get a laugh, we've kind of thrown in. Yeah. So it's got a kind of a messy, Brechtian sort of style where anything is possible at the edge of frame. Yeah, I think audiences are a lot more sophisticated these days, so therefore we do have all this historical comedy to draw from. And part of our joy has been kind of taking a bit from that style and that style and that style and kind of mishmashing it all together so to surprise the audience. Look, I think comedy is a very generous kind of art form as opposed to drama. It really depends on the audience. It's, it's, it's all about playing with your audience. And I think um, when you go along and see a good comedy and the audience in this particular piece right from the start are invited right into the world in the way in which we've set it up, I think the, the game uh, and, and the surprises and the delight with the crowd will just be delightful for an audience. It's a, it's a, it'll be a fun night in the theatre. Most definitely, yeah. Mm -hmm. but, they're not, but it's also, yeah, as I said, there's a serious tone to it. I don't like directing comedies that are just funny, mm -hmm. particularly. Mm -hmm. I like them to have something to say. And this piece packs a punch in what it has to say about medicine and what it has to say about men and patriarchy. Mm -hmm. um, and very interestingly, Hillary has given all the women in this play a much more active sort of role throughout the piece. So we've changed, particularly the journey of the younger woman in the, in the piece, Angelique. She's become a much more active participant in the story and takes control of her own destiny. And those things are great. And it, it, I, I'm watching the piece in rehearsals going, this, you are such an, can I say asshole? Yeah, you've said it. Uh, asshole. Say it a second time. Asshole. asshole. You've said it three times now. Poop. Okay. Uh, again, stop there. There are songs. Yes. There are some really amazing songs that um, Philip, Johnson Philip Johnson has created has some fantastic scene breakers um, mm. where we kind of uh, basically reenact. Uh, they're, they're like ads, really, for different sorts of pharmaceuticals, mm. done kind of dressed up in these wonderful routines that are kind of reminiscent of Bus Busby Berkeley or you know, different sorts of 50s ads. and um, Yeah, so it's a real got a musical theatre element to it, this piece, but based mm. in vaudeville, so it's not sort of, I don't know, it's not Aladdin, although I loved Aladdin, but it's it's more based in vaudeville, it's darker, it's more subversive than that. Um, but And there's a real show-stopping number at the end that Phillips and Hillary have written together, which is terrific. Um, and one of the products that they advertise is called Erectomax. 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 Erectomax.